Welcome to Osh, After the Bell podcast, where we bring you a fun and informative conversation about everything outside school hours care and give a voice to our fellow educators. So buckle up. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Osh, After the Bell podcast. Today, I'm again joined with Bobby from Firefly HR. How are you doing, Bobby? Hello. Uh, great. Fantastic. That's really nice to you know, Bobby, especially <laughs> knowing how your last night went uh, with less sleep. Uh, we've got Caleb again with us. How are we doing, Caleb? G'day. Hi, I'm wonderful. Uh, Caleb, all the way from Japan uh, now. Um, and, our special, and our special guest today, uh, very excited to uh, introduce um, Lucas from Worthy. Welcome. Welcome, Lucas. Um, uh, and thanks Thank for you. your time, Lucas, uh, in advance. Um, for being with us. I just wanted to introduce, uh, for those who don't know uh, much about Worthy, I'm actually on the Worthy's website and I'm just going to read the philosophy because we, it actually mm. was something we all were inspired by, yeah. Lucas, before you got in. So Worthy, I'm just going to read it out of the website. Uh, by the way, it's Worthy, W-E-A-R-T-H-Y dot C-O, just in case you want to follow the website. Worthy are the number one advocates of play providing bespoke play environments that ignite creativity and curiosity in children. Led by TEDx speaker, innovator, and educator, Lucas Ritson. Did I say it right, Lucas? <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> nailed it. I should have read it. Hey, I should have, I should have read it. Let me just ask these questions before. Were these work contributes to hundreds of thousands of children feeling supported, challenged, connected, and confident, partnering with our great Greatest educators, Mother Nature, Worthy inspires generational changes by empowering our future leaders with compassion, resilience, and respect for the planet. All children deserve a happy, memorable, and adventure and adventurous childhood filled with imagination, excitement, and play. So that's uh, that's uh, Worthy's philosophy. Um, tell us more about Worthy, yeah, Lucas. Yeah, should live up to after that word. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Worthy came about from me working as a full-time outdoor educator in early childhood centre. Um, I was quite fortunate to have my role in addition to the ratio and my room was the outdoors. Um, I came from a background of designing and building community gardens um, and then getting into And my role was like to teach children about nature, essentially. And then when I started to work with the children and seeing how I've always been a big kid, always loved play. Um, the children's adult, as my daughter refers to me as. And um, that's where I, I got to see the type of activities that children were really pumped about. Um, also, the things that I thought probably they're not so inspired about and the reservations they have around getting dirty and getting wet. And like, I was just like, this is another world. And then um, having my ADD hyper focused tendencies. I just delved deeply into the world of play and looking at a lot of play work, um, research papers from around the world. And um, very organically, the environment where I was working grew and evolved and they all they had great practices already. Um, so I just continued to evolve and putting this child at the centre of it. And, um, and I was using a lot of risk as a framework to work from. Sandsetters research is phenomenal. And then um, from there, the children built the environment with me. So I'd come in, do some maintenance, we'd do garden, we'd harvest the food for the day, we'd match it up to the menu. And then the vessel in between everything was play. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, people were like, oh, how are you doing that? And, or how are you getting away with that? And <laughs> I wanted to get away with as much as possible. So that's where I went and learned like the standards for playgrounds and this and that. And it all came together. And here we are 10 years later as worthy um, with a design team, with a construction team and um, the, the play advocacy piece and kind of that consulting role. And uh, it's very easy to summarise the mission of worthy is just we want to reach as many children as possible the end it's not complicated and um the vessel for that is that intrinsic motivation that children are about is play so yeah, yeah. that's where we're at isn't that isn't that good like I, I i liked how people said how do you get to do that or how do you get away uh, uh, from yeah. doing that i mean uh that's that's a that's a and so it's it sounds like a bit more 
like an organic approach like a things one thing led to another and and then yeah absolutely um, Absolutely. Um, as we mentioned earlier, before we started, um, I was a flight attendant for many years and um, getting a really good understanding of the world and the, just the observation of imbalance within communities, mm -hmm. within societies. And um, it was actually in India where I went to, I think I was in Calcutta. Yeah. And, you know, I lived in Dubai. I was, I had the my birthday, I went out on a friend's yacht and got my Harmani sunglasses because, you know, I was <laughs> a tosser. As you do in Dubai. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like thinking I was Jay-Z or something. <laughs> and, um, and then two days later, I was in the south of India, like mm. seeing that despair. And mm. I just had this really aha moment of like, you're doing nothing. You're not contributing to the world. Mm. Um, so I just really wanted to focus on doing something that mattered when I came back and mm. that's where the um, community gardens and permaculture so that yeah. creating ecosystems in permaculture mm. um, was something I was really passionate about and when the framing we've evolved into it is about that ecology of play piece it's like what contributes to this environment mm. that is going to support the children to flourish on their own terms it's not about, hey, I'm going to give you this, give you that. Um, so when I started to do it, um, I had some people that were interested in what I was doing, like saws and hammers and people calling me up and how are you allowed to have a raw log? But mm. um, it's fortunate to say 10 years on, like logs are a standard practice, which is great. Yeah. But back then it was like, how did you get away with a oh. fire pit? We have some log stories, I think, from Callum and my centres yeah. and what we're not. Oh. Uh, yeah. we pull playgrounds out now and we like um we pull out the rubber and there's logs underneath and i was like you had it right the first time <laughs> yes <Yeah>. so true <laughs> um and then from there i started to do some trainings and teach people about what i did and they say oh mm. come to our center mm. so it just continued to evolve and i just wanted to like okay well i'm impacting 80 80 to 100 children a year at the center where i'm working and then the opportunity came up and i could teach people and then that web broadens and reach more children. Right. So it's always been the model like, okay, what's the strategy? Okay, well, well how are we going to reach more people? And that's where I love the work that um, Angus and Izzy and just the whole sector of Osh or Ush, depending what state yeah. you're in. Um, I always get it mixed up. So I apologize in advance 10 times I'm going to say the wrong one. Um, but also it's just this, you're creating environments for children to flourish. And, and that's where so much of childhood is happening now. So it's after school times because they're not getting it at home. Especially with the with the real estate nowadays. I mean, they're getting <laughs> nothing at home. Yeah, I'm on the Gold Coast. You get another year at the moment. <laughs> no, yeah. uh, you know, it was... Sorry, so I was going to say it's a very structured time as well. You know, that that time, that that space after school care is those those few hours that kids might just have to themselves where they're not, you know, going to study maths or going to piano lessons or going to, you know, do competitive sports. Yeah. And so there's a real area there for them to, you know, to explore, or, you know, the, the environment and just be. Yeah. You know? And that's, mm. that's like prime real estate. When you're looking at a child mm. at kindergarten age, average screen times, four hours a day, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, where is that just being? What, and also just being in, and being able to disperse all of that, stress from their days and be able to move their body and explore and experience and you know and that's where um i think the, the that's the sector has just done such a good job of evolving practices and things like with kylie brennerly like doing the research yep. projects mm. and demonstrating that um mm -hmm. that's next level that's where you need to do it and then to see Angus's research evolve and so many people go, how did you do that? Yeah. And it's well, the same exactly. question with Angus. How did you get away with that? <laughs> <laughs> um, and Sarah didn't mention it earlier, but he's actually studying a PhD in the underscore I was care space. So it's more people like him yeah. going on and doing that extra research. Is you guys in Queensland? Yeah. I don't know what's going on up there. It's um, just a better state. That's all. Queensland is <laughs> we, we are thinking of moving there just because everyone else is like. Man, <laughs> the impact like, is crazy. Like yeah. this yeah. little yeah. thing that's yeah. happening. This this the ecology of play in yes. in this ecosystem we've got. Yeah, it's it's great. 
Um, I Next. interrupted before, sorry, because I know Callum has a question. If I'm allowed to slot this. Yes, in here. Uh, actually, I was going to lead to <laughs> Callum's question because sorry, I Sarah. really like that question, but I thought. Um, I was, I was going to say, I was really, uh, it was really nice to see, uh, not nice to see, I mean, it was like, it seems that you were looking for something when you went to Calcutta and, and you saw something mm. and, and lots of people get to see that, but not yeah. everybody does something about it. Let's, let's put mm. it this way, you know, uh, but when you saw it, you're like, oh, you know, I'm going to do something worthy of my time yeah. and of my life let's put it this yeah. way and then and then it reminded me of Caleb's question because Caleb had a question about no I, I'm not I'm just gonna let Caleb ask that question Caleb uh you're you're, you're, it's built you're up now. okay yeah. I'll, I'll take it well I'm sure you know what it might be I just wanted to turn the tables on you Lucas and ask you uh, where did you play as a child oh I've heard that question <laughs> once or twice um <laughs> I was one of one of six boys um okay so it was a bunch of outdoor play, but being being one of six boys, we were um, we're in it was challenge, challenging um, demographic of where I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very everyone had to contribute. So it was always chores first. It was always your responsibilities first, and then and yeah. then go out and explore. And we did some pretty wild stuff. You can imagine. I've got three older brothers, two younger. Mm -hmm. um, we did the whole cow pushing thing when we went out to the countryside. Um, a lot of cubbies, a lot of forts, a lot of risky risky play. Um, like an example of that was like there was a paddock close by with a creek running through. So we were just over there exploring and we came across a little camp and we were like, oh, this is cool. We could actually camp here for the night. They've cleared space and it's right next to some water supply and there's some stuff here but it doesn't look like anyone's around. We'll come back and camp tonight. So we're there and we start pushing all these old coals in the water supply and we're like, <laughs> clear some more space to come back. And two minutes later, there's these faces pop out of the shrub and they're like, hey, what are you doing? And we're like, oh. so these guys in camo. So we just leg it. We're out of there. <laughs> they're chasing us across fields. And um, we got back to a mate's house. We're all hanging out in the backyard and these guys just appear at the fence and they're like, oh, it's fine. We just want to know where you chucked our wax. Where is it? <laughs> and um, it turns out it was like an army survival training. Oh. <laughs> and we were oh, in the water supply. <laughs> <laughs> we chucked all the coal in it. Um, so, yeah. so stuff like that. And because um, we're, we're such a big family, it was the two older brothers together, the two middle and two younger. So I had a brother mm -hmm. 18 months apart from me. We're, we're side by side in everything we did. So, yeah, right. lots of injuries. I remember end of school holidays, my mum's like, do not go out. Do not. I'm not, you're not staying home longer from school with another broken arm <laughs> or stitches. And it would always happen like the day before school went back. She'd be like, no. Perfect timing. <laughs> yeah. So, That's so brilliant. good fun. Good fun. I mean, as I was listening to you, I thought, you know, uh, as others are listening to this, they, they might start thinking about their childhood memories in mm. in terms of how did they play and and how did they even conceptualize play now we call it risky play but but for mm. you at that moment it was like common sense let's just do yeah. it yeah it was isn't just it? problem solving isn't it like yeah. that's what it is oh, and oh, problem creating <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> that's I was gonna, challenge challenge promoting um, I, was, I was gonna say challenge uh yeah problem creating um uh Caleb, you were the one who asked the question what about you well how did your childhood uh what what did you do I just want to lead on about that. That question is such a powerful question, but I actually use, I proposed that question at my work. Um, I put on a whiteboard when the parents came in to sign in and out their children. And um, mm -hmm. I got them to all write down their answers and um, just to get a, an idea of where did they play as a child. Mm -hmm. And you could see they're all playing like, you know, I played in the creek, I played in drain yeah. pipes, you know, I did all this. Um, and it really um, consolidated the, the things that I was doing at our center that, you know, you all just risk and play, but I was, yeah. you know, trying to push into them like, well, you guys did the same thing. And then there was just that, you know, that understanding that, you know, this is something you did. This is what we're trying yeah. to do. And it was like this harmony almost that, you know, yeah. but I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, reinvent the wheel. I'm just trying to continue something that I think is, you know, very valuable and, and great for childhood, those freedoms that you guys had and that, it's something that we can offer here in this environment as well. Absolutely. It, it, it really ignites that emotive thing. Like you ask where you play as a child, you ask anyone, they instantly they're like, sit back, they open up, they smirk. 
And they're like, yeah. And you can even ask people, hey, did you get hurt? And they go, yeah. Yeah. Go, so it was positive. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. The, the next good question I like to ask when you can really create that dialogue and you've got a bit of time is saying like, now, what is the activity that you partook in that you would not allow your child to? Everything. Mm. And they're like, <laughs> All of the above. And I was this. very, very naughty. <laughs> yeah, they're like this and then they go, oh. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, but it's, it's, it, it's improved a lot. Like when you, like especially the risk realm, like once upon mm-hmm. a time, you, well, there's still a lot of work to do just because the word risk and as, as having a construction wing of the business, um, like you talk about risk is something to be avoided at all costs. Yeah. Um, but then you're trying to convey that to parents and say, this is good for your child, but they're t- getting told for eight hours a day to avoid it. Yeah. So that's where we try to change it and tweak it to like talk about courage, courageous play and, well, um, on your website reframe. too, even like the resilience, like it helps build that resilience mm. too. Yeah, absolutely. And we try to like justify certain desires for certain environments, you know, where all products of our environment, you mm. know, and where we've come into a, we've into a realm of a very risk averse environment, mm. you know, and so how do we, you know, go about, you know, changing that, that, mm. that stigma um, you know that these this isn't a bad thing. This is something that you've always done. It's like as you spoke in one of your podcasts. You know, creating a world within the world, and mm. um, how how do we facilitate that? So, cool. yeah, and a little very um, within creating environments, as we all know, environment creates behavior. Yeah, and then behavior from a psychology standpoint is language. So it's saying, mm-hmm. okay, if I've got behavioural challenges, or what, what's the what's the behaviour telling me about the environment that the children are engaged with? Yeah, and that's that's from the micro to the macro, from community to physical environment where the children are spending their time. Mm-hmm. Hey, Writing down a lot that- of your. Oh, sorry. I, I was just going to say because we're the like Sarah and I both handwrite, so if you see us doing this, we're usually writing down quotes <laughs> and things like that as well. I'm the same. Oh. And, as soon as, and, 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 and as Bobby and I handwrite, we often like finish at the same time and often ask the same question yeah, at the same time. <laughs> so good. Not looking at to, each other. Just... Yeah, you should listen to, like, I mean, uh, if you watch a podcast where Bobby and I are the only ones, we're like writing each of those points and then, <laughs> but we're not looking at each other. So um, uh, well, that's interesting. But, you know, I, you, the second point you mentioned, and I really like a podcast where the guest speaker asks a question for himself. That's a great mm-hmm. thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I last I really loved the second question when you said um, that what are the things that you did but you uh, don't allow your mm. or you won't allow your kids to do it and we have Barbie here who like uh, laughed and I thought it was laughter of acknowledgement Barbie uh, you are a new you I keep saying you're a new mother but you are a new mother again yeah is it is it true for you too um, yeah so I've got a five week old that's why I wasn't going to be on the first one because it was meant to be the day he was coming <laughs> um, and then I've got a two and a half year old and I've got the two sides of my brain I say all the time I've got like the educator educator side where like I know how important risk is thanks to Callum um, I'm pointing here because he's there on my screen have no idea if I'm actually pointing to him for everyone else. Yeah, yeah. I just like this because <laughs> yeah. and this is going back to where I first heard about you well, it was through Callum ages ago because we had that type of school where you're not allowed to run on mm. the ash belt Mm. Uh, no handstands, cartwheels, tree climbing. We eventually got in, thanks to people like Callum. But just it was no, no, no. And you mentioned a log before. Wow, did a log set off a big chain of events at our center once? Like we just weren't allowed to do anything. But he mentioned you, and I remember back then it was even about the um, shipping containers. Yes. For Louis Park Pay, like like he was very much the play advocate around there. So I've learned so much off Callum over the time because also as the nominated supervisor, I had the I'm just going to get in trouble if mm. the kid gets hurt. Yeah. The risk. But yeah. then you've got the awesome people like Callum who's like, no, 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 we need to do this because mm. even before your environment creates behaviour, my kids were getting bored because they weren't even allowed to run on the edge. Felt like <laughs> what else is going to happen? And then, um, yeah. Sorry, I got sidetracked there. But then, yeah, with my own kids, I've got my educator side of I know what's beneficial. But mm. then I've got 
my helicopter parent side <laughs> where I'm like worried and paranoid about everything. And it's probably also because I know when I was young, there were there were no rules or re- like restrictions. Yeah. I find like, and a lot of us kind of grow up, like play was just, you just go play. Like yeah. you, you make and define your play. Whereas now you, I think our kids have to think so much through of, am I allowed to play with this? Will mm. I get in trouble for playing with this? Or you see it in the eye contact, they pick up something and they look yeah. for that approval. Yeah. 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 And they're like, make the decision for me. Yeah. Whereas we didn't have to do, I don't know about you, guys, yeah. but I didn't have to do that. It was just like, I don't know. <laughs> didn't even have to think twice about anything. And this is also why. Did a lot of things you probably shouldn't do, but you learn through it. Something that stood out to me, what you said there, you said you mentioned on the fly there that you were naughty. Yeah. And you wouldn't <laughs> no. let your kids be naughty. So what, <laughs> what does naughty, you your perception of naughty look like? Oh, probably doing things you definitely don't want kids to do, I guess, <laughs> in a different, probably off podcast. We'll, we'll, we'll say that up. We'll, we'll leave Area. that to the after hours. Yeah, after yeah. Hours, yes. Not what you'd <laughs> expect for the age range, definitely. Yeah. Let, um, let me pause the recording and then we can shift. Yeah. <laughs> like, we'll yeah, this is a PG podcast. podcast. <laughs> uh, it's like a, it's a really nice catch, Lucas. By the way, like you caught two words that you uh, used uh, recently. You used the word naughty. Like I mean, you kind of caught the mm. word how mm. we even as an adult see ourselves as naughty. Or earlier you used the word risky play, and how you caught the word risk mm. in that. As an adult, the way we conceptualize play or unsupervised play, perhaps, is 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 something risky, nori, something wrong is yeah. going to happen. And I think is it is mm. would that be the biggest challenge in in let's say I'm going to say our work, our our work or our agenda with this? Like, is it the biggest challenge? The parents. It and, is. And it is absolutely. It's the reaction to play. It's okay. not the response to play, and that's what we're caught mm. in. And when we're busy. Um, we get into that reactive mindset of like, mm. oh, stop, don't, be careful. And it's not actually responding. And when we respond, we can position the child's best interest at the middle of it. But when yeah. we're reacting, that's to make our own anxiety feel, mm-hmm. the, like push that down. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to fulfill me right now, so stop it. <laughs> yeah. And especially with uncertainty, like we, we mm. love certainty. We yeah. love safety. It means we can just get on with stuff. Because as a culture, we're drive, drive, drive. Mm. Um, but then it's that once you, I've seen it in educators, like give them the tools to be able to pause. The power of the pause is amazing. It's just like that extra breath and it takes that adrenaline-based response, uh, yeah. reaction, sorry, adrenaline-based yeah. reaction, and it can move you over to that more dopamine-based functioning, mm-hmm. which is the child's interest um yeah and just like within interacting but like being saying be careful doesn't do anything yeah <laughs> it just makes them go Ugh! i and, probably say be careful like 20 times yeah. a day if i reflect on it yeah well look at the um physiology physiological response to excitement is like mm-hmm. your heart rate your concentration your oxygen levels and also your physiological response to fear is like same. mirrored yeah same. but then it's that it's the perception mm-hmm. that steers it. And this child's like climbing the tree. You're balancing on a log, as passive as that is, um, for many children. Um, they're in this dopamine, like, hey, I'm killing it here. How good is this? And I've set my own goal and I'm achieving my goals. So therefore, I'm getting bigger dopamine. I've got mastery. And then some seagull swoops in, goes, careful. And all of a sudden, you switch over that fear response. Mm-hmm. And also, yeah. you're stripping away their achievement. You're stripping away their joy about it. Yeah. You, you said something earlier about with your travel and seeing how different everyone is from place to place mm. as well. And it, I know Callum had actually, I'd been asking because he's in Japan now. Yeah. Like, and he's been exploring. And I was really curious on, like, I've been asking him about um, how different the kids play there. And I know mm. you've even noticed how how different they are in regards to what they're allowed to do on their own or play with. Yeah, it's a it's a big um, creation, I guess. I can't speak for the whole of Japan, but I've been here for like, you know, two months and just watching, you know, the community, just how the urban, how the environment's been designed. There's little pockets, a little 
parks everywhere. And the fact is you can walk everywhere and found that there's no footpaths and cars have their own, they're not parked on the side of the road. You share the road with pedestrians. Mm. So the environment's actually set up in a way where, you know, kids can be walking out in the car on the, you know, on the roads and they can be riding their bikes. And yes, both parents are working, but mm. you know, you'll find 30 kids at the park in the afternoon, which I've seen many times. And I've actually documented, you know, in a recent thing I wrote, and it was just amazing. I'm like, I, you know, I, you wouldn't see this in Australia. You would, you know, you'd get demonized, you know, for, for kids, 30 kids playing on their own, like they'll climbing up slides and reaching over and doing all the risky stuff mm. without any adults there as well. And I'm just like, why is this happening? I'm like, it's a, a creation of the environment that, you know, it's conducive to this. And I was like, this is so interesting. And I talked to my wife, she's like, Yes, this is normal. And I'm like, this, this is not, <laughs> not normal risky. where I came from. Like, Environment creates behavior. Yeah. Environment yeah. creates behavior. And it was it was a, a beautiful thing to watch. And um, you know, I you know, the the next day I, I went into the park and because I watched them play and I watched how they dealt with the static environment, like the slide and the swings, and you know, they were doing everything you shouldn't be doing and climbing on top of the monkey bars. But then I saw the little bits of evidence of like they were going into the nature and picking the flowers and exploring through that and all the stuff that was malleable they could touch with their hands. So the next day I'm like, I'm gonna take a risk and go into this park and chuck in some of my moving boxes and yeah. you know, and just see what happens. And it was awesome. The, you know, I can't speak much Japanese. These kids came straight up to me, were trying to trying to talk to me. Um, and you know, they I like motioning to the boxes and they were like, they were loving it. They're like, mm -hmm. we can play with this. And I'm like, yeah. And they were trying to teach me, like, you know, get me into play tip with them. They couldn't explain it with their words. I was understanding. So they started motioning, like, it's like koreo, koreo, like grabbing my arms, like this is what we're doing. Yeah. And it was the most beautiful like two hours um of you know, uh, since I've been here. And I'm like, wow. Like they, yeah. they get it. And I want to be, you know, I want to understand this, this culture and this environment and this community that what, why is this okay here? And how, how can this, you know, how can we keep this going? You know, it's just a very normal part of their lives. Yeah. And that plays into, oh, the, the name's on the tip of my tongue, but it's like the playable cities research where that Australian yeah, Greg, base. Oh. Yeah. I, I listened to Gregor Muse. He's got yeah. a podcast with him with, unreal i just ordered his book i just i yeah. need to know more <laughs> yeah. yeah he's like full park assessment we're working on a joint project together which is oh, um, really? so super good. exciting around the ecology of play hmm. which is good but the livable cities one with her name is something like Korshik, and hmm. she got she got a scholarship to go she went to vancouver singapore japan and did research into like how playable and how livable the the cities are so yes sir yeah, and then seeing how like children, <laughs> children in Japan and Singapore have more physical activity than children in Australia. Um, they do. On a, yeah, on a very simple matrix because it's accessible. It's right at their doorstep. That's why mm. we see children in like in a city. They're actually having more physical activity than children in the suburbs, where you've got all these huge green spaces and parks mm. because it's right. this functional activity. Like they go, they're going downstairs, they're moving, they can get around. So that on hyper level sounds like what you've shared there around. Yeah. The, every, um, everything's so, so accessible. Condensed. You can walk yeah. anywhere. You can go anywhere. It's, it's not yeah. like, you know, travel three kilometers to get to the local park. It's a mm. hundred meters get down in the, the road. car. And then, yeah, I'll get you. in the car. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I actually, I'm, Oh, sorry. See, there we go. We always <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> you did you write something? That, let me have a look at your notes one day. It's, I'm, I'm sure that they're <laughs> going to be exactly the same. But, you know, um, so as I was listening to uh, Caleb and I thought, Caleb, you know, once you've done your research in Japan, we'll go to India and we'll have a look at India. So I guess it's, it's, it's going to be uh, another eye opener um, in the Indian play or oh, uh, so-called risky play but you know as i was looking at the words from response to reaction again a difference in language uh, yes the reaction being a, a bit more egocentric a bit more mm. satisfying your own will uh, as you said uh, because yeah. we are filled we do not like uncertainty yeah. so we're like oh you know while i'm at work can you not do all of those things and mm. because i don't want to a leave the work or b you, you get hurt while i'm not watching you something like that well, also and the then, guilt and the guilt and the shame. I don't want to feel bad. I don't want to feel judged. I don't want to feel bad. I've exactly. got enough stress in my life. I'm I'm maxed yep. out as an adult in the world. 
yeah the thought that you're going to pour more in my top of my cup yeah. with guilt it's yeah. like hey no yeah. you're not <laughs> exactly Calm and down. i don't want to walk into that i don't want to leave the office again because my kid did something again and from the, yeah. and, and like oh she keeps taking days off or he keeps taking days off because yeah. of xyz reason and but when kaylon was talking about things and and i i wrote a, i drew a linear um rela- uh, relationship between environment behavior and then i wrote language yeah mm. and it reminded me of bandura's theory on environment behavior and personality and uh, mm. so i thought oh okay but then as I, as uh, as kaylon was explaining how he saw things and i thought oh maybe the relationship seems to be secular it seems that the language changes the behavior changes the environment mm. at times so the yeah. narrative the narrative that japanese adults might have or let's say the children mm. have at the moment the narrative being this is normal as his wife said it's mm. normal so since the language in itself is like oh i'm just doing a normal thing it doesn't create that barrier that oh i'm doing yeah. a risky thing mm-hmm. so as you mentioned earlier that you know as a child being excited and so thrilled uh, uh the physiological response is being you know the, the adrenaline rush and uh, heart beats yeah. up and but you like you're like achieving things and as soon mm-hmm. as someone says oh this is a risky play or be careful or something like that as if it's going to make any sense to a child anyways because mm-hmm. it's hard to conceptualize the child goes oh did i just do something wrong and yeah. then not only that but even in the future when every time they get that heart beat up and then excited they think mm. they might still think oh am i doing something wrong yeah. is fun wrong like i mean you know yeah. sometimes this relationship that, well, yeah that representation of excitement and fear is that risk versus hazard barometer mm-hmm. that sand mm-hmm. setter refers to and it's through exploration in a safe environment being play right. which we understand hey this is this is i can have mastery over this part hey the repercussions of me messing up here are not worth the reward <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's what they that's what and then if if that's confusing you could have a low level of excitement but your body is going to misinterpret that as like anxiety mm, and and mm, something to yeah. fear and we're yeah, getting yeah. children just constantly with this low level of stress instead of it saying something that's manageable but suitable for the purpose that I can overcome it's instantly click, kicking to that fear yeah and the data yeah. around like the acd data just came out in australia um and around those well-being scores they're absolutely not great mm. and um one of the biggest right increases in mental health was been 0 to 5 right crazy Yeah and, and like, we're in a place where there's so much affordability on what we can do like I quickly looked up the floor cuz I was curious and this is my two second memory brain going as well <laughs> um greenland i know greenland is covered in ice and iceland's covered in green for anyone listening um and i was like man what are kids in greenland yeah i told you my brain's a bit off <laughs> what are kids in greenland doing for play they obviously have not much play space you'd think i quickly looked it up i found an article australian family that moved there they play they just go mm. out and play it's pitch black cuz it's dark a lot yep. and it's covered in ice and this mum's I'll share it in the links that put in it cuz I was curious and it's just yeah kids just go out and play talk to kids like um the kids did with Callan doesn't matter if they don't speak the same language <laughs> and just go yeah like Us. and what are they even playing with like I, i think about what we are so fortunate to have here in regards to our, like the affordability of spaces and everything even structured or not like we've got yeah. a lot of bush and our kids are just not yeah getting there we we and over resource it yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, all these things sure. that they think they need you know they need all these things I'm like yeah. do they <laughs> 100% and that's where i got into creating play environments like because people were saying hey can you come out and help us and i was like create a little zone here do this like focus on the flow um and then they're like oh we got a playground company in to rebuild our playground and i was like oh that's awesome and then they call me back in and it's like turf with a fort Yeah. And it's all very plonk. Here's a resource plonk. Here's a resource plonk. And we need to create environments not present resources. So that was me going and then a mentor of mine was like, "Well, stop complaining about it. How about you do it then?" I was like, "Fine." Um <laughs> good mentor. You're exactly right. It's just over resourcing. I want to go to an environment where I can see evidence of children. Like the boxes you left in the park, <laughs> like they're movable. It's it honors the child's affordance to have their ownership over the space. Mm. When we present resources to children, it doesn't. No. 
We're just so how, how, how do you, another term. How do you, in the role of like a, a playground designer, I've, I mean, I've been on your website and read about it, but how do you find that balance of, you know, um, that the children's agency is shown in all these, you know, in the design and it's not so much as about the design, but engaging, you know, the parents, the educators and the, the children and how we can create this, you know, some static, you know, playgrounds mixed with, you know, tangible yeah. things that you can work with. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good question. Um, it's about making sure there's diversity. And I use references like Sandsetter Research, for example. Sandsetter is a beautiful framework to use because there's six categories of risk and play, which give the child diversity in opportunity. So there's secluded play for the child that needs secluded. There's playing at height, there's playing at speed, there's a use of tools and dangerous elements. Um, so that that was the very start of where, where I started with it. But as of... Um, evolved in in the play realm over time i've added other research in and um like assessing play value in a space the higher the imprint a child can make on a space the higher the value to the child that's why loose parts are something i'm like hey Gotta this is it. it and like a lot of the time the playgrounds that i'm creating i say we we're the bridge like We've created an environment which is the bridge that they're continually going to cross yeah. because you need to la start layer in these practices like the playground that i'm designing is a foundation i want to see i want to come back in three months and see evidence of the ch child has made a path through oh. a garden um and what to try to define that and get everything out of my brain um we've come up with that ecology an ecology of play framework so we can actually go in, assess a playground and say, okay, based on the research, and this is what Greg's working with me on, is like, okay, where is this? And then the evidence of it. And at the centre of that ecology is a child. And then everything out from there. It's not saying, hey, I've got a resource for you. There you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and working with the educators and looking at the overall community because what i put into one center will absolutely not yeah. work at another exactly so it's yeah. getting away from that cookie cutter but if i focus on the child and i have to be held accountable for it like when we my design team do a design they're layering in the ecology of play piece and they're laying it out in front of me saying this is where we've got this is where we've got evidence of the diversity for the children yeah. and it's never been so important that's why i love the osh slash oosh area because um once again it's the environment for them to thrive i hope that answers your question uh, yeah no that does that does that was a really good question and i absolutely loved your response to it how do you start like how, let's say when people call you and you go there do you observe the children do you observe the existing environment first and then you kind of look at your ecology or framework and go okay this is where yeah. we are this yeah. is what the kids are doing at the moment yeah and do you interview kids or do you observe them? Like yeah. how, how does that we, happen? We go in, we interview children. Um, child's voice is one of the ecology yep. icons okay. as it. well. So I need to mm -hmm. demonstrate that and go in, talk to the children, talk to the educators. Observations are fantastic because the children don't portray anything more than what they're authentically experiencing. Mm -hmm. If I was saying that diplomatically, like as more people get involved in the sector in early childhood, because it is a commercial sector, um, it's easy to say and portray one thing as an owner and what you're interested in, because mm -hmm. maybe that's a competitive advantage. But then, okay, how are we demonstrating it? Where's the evidence of it? Um, yeah. I've got to be very tuned in once again, because... I can't put in practices that I can't create an environment that don't uh, too much of a stretch between the existing practices yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If I go to like, if I've got a Angus and Izzy style, I know I can add that the variable of risk in, we can really go after it. Um, but if I'm in a center and it's brand new and they don't have that cohesive, right support there like i can't do it but i will always ensure that i've got the availability for it to evolve because we yeah. want to it needs to grow with them 
is, is that like, what you, sorry oh, sorry um, go, no no bobby you no, go no as I'm, lucas I'm, is talking and sarah you two both sound like you've got exactly the same approach but you're delivering playgrounds and then you're delivering i guess the emotional side to the behavior mm -hmm. on sarah's end. but how everything lucas just said i feel like that's what you do when you go into a service as well um you don't have a cookie cutter approach to everyone i can say that because you've been to my service <laughs> and mm -hmm. know that um and talking to the kids and everyone and watching and really taking in yeah, that and, and I think, you know, when, when uh, Lucas was answering how responding to my question about observation and child being the focus and how yeah. then we spread the awareness, but we don't go straight to that level where we think uh, would be great, but also not as far from the existing practices. Mm -hmm. And and that's what made me think, oh, you know, uh, so uh, in, my, in, at my, in my work, I'm not, I'm talking about children's emotions and resilience. Mm -hmm. And I also read in your website that resilience to environment, you know, but coming back to your um, response, I thought that when you said that you still uh, give that space to evolve, although you create uh, something which let's say it's a brand new school and we may, not, may or may not have the cohesion. Mm -hmm. So you start, you start small, but you leave that. And is that where the word imprint comes from? So you, so you, you, you allow the children to now start doing things with it and yeah. you perhaps come back after three months and say, Hey, guess what? We can now get to the, Absolutely. This level well, I'll come level. back three, three months later and I'll be like, okay, mm -hmm. where are we at? Yeah. yeah let's um look at the evidence not what you tell me we can yes. we can go and see it <laughs> yeah. let's observe um, again also yeah. also simple things like mm. if you don't have a good it sounds very boring but it needs to be considered if you don't have good maintenance of your right. space and it just looks hmm. dirty not messy there's a big difference <laughs> if it looks dirty and or there hasn't been the education around it with the with the parents and the practices aren't, aren't robust from yeah. the internal side. It, it's 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 going to it's going to actually diminish. We've I've seen it time and time again. Everyone wants to do loose parts. They chuck all the loose parts in. It gets overwhelming. Gets messy. They get all pulled out because it's messy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We need to put some other practices in there. And and we've mentioned Angus's name a couple of times. And mm. uh, there are many schools that uh, Angus and I kind of work together, and yep. we complement each other in our practices and uh, so many times I'll go to a school and I'm like oh Agnes has been here or mm. he goes to a school and and I would have been there but yeah uh, again talking about different things um, but yeah you're right because uh, we need that educators also being a bit more passionate uh, about that like just Caleb is mentioning how um, what a gem he is when he's explaining things about uh, we yeah. need uh, lots of kalems in a in a yeah harsh, see i don't even call it Oosh. sorry new south wales um uh, <laughs> 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 it's, it's easier Flag. 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 Yeah, we call it ask yeah before and after school care exactly. basque. Basque. basque and then we have ask uh after school yeah. care and then well, we've this, got Oosh, Oosh. the sack in <laughs> the sack school 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 yeah, school yeah. School yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. so um anyway sorry sorry uh, in in terms of that um in terms of that Osh, and actually i've now forgotten what i was going to say so no i'm gonna, right. i was i was acknowledging callum's hard work so yeah, yeah. so we've got these uh, we've got these educators and unless we also work on educators well-being and educators uh, resilience and educators awareness and uh, and i think that's a part of your because when you say environment we are the environment yeah. also along with, with mm -hmm. that so i'm sure that in your line of work you also uh, you, you don't go and just put things after having a chat with a child, but you also make kids, uh, like staff members aware of that, educators aware, and then yeah. they, they can stay in touch with you and perhaps, you know, continue with that work. But then it, it takes a lot of intrinsic motivation from the educators themselves. Uh, yeah. With the, with, the, with the type of work we are doing at the moment, like with, every three, four months, we have 30% new staff members. Uh, mm. I, I think that, Lucas, you yeah. might have observed the same thing. Uh, also. Yeah, I think the early childhood sector turns over so many people that it's every five years there's a complete turnover of the sector. Yeah. Wow. So, Unless you work with Callum and I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do come across those gems. <laughs> uh, well, good 10 years. Um, I, yeah. I, I noticed something reoccurring in each thing and I find it's like you touch on it a bit um I think Lucas may have even said that agency like children's mm. agency and what we're meant to be doing like in our framework my time our place it's in there nine times I had a look the other day when Callum wrote his piece but I don't know even myself when I started if we truly understand what that means properly as an educator 
the children's agency like it's even in nine times in my time out of place and they give definitions and more and more and more and it really is like I've got the national quality standards in front of me um, in there as well about like child directed learning so each child's agency is promoted enabling them to make choices and decisions that influence events and their world and which just I feel like myself included just not always providing that because mm. of that risk side and I think we just kind of got to flip that a bit yeah make sure absolutely. we're doing that for any educators listening too because I was definitely risk averse mm. I think till the day I left sorry yeah. Callum <laughs> um, but it's Thank great you. there's people out there like Callum who kept I'm going to say pushing it but not pushing it in a bad way so kept educating educating the families educating yeah. the school he was up against a bit of a brick wall when it came to schools if you're on school sites yeah. um educating the other staff educating you might work with a company or a parent committee and if you get no because I know for us I don't know when we tried to do tree climbing we got no straight away but mm. then we eventually got tree climbing because it's just yeah keep you just got to appeal to the reasoning, like the ethical yeah. reasoning. Like I, yeah, when I was yeah. in um, Finland, I got to talk to the education minister and he, I said, why do you put an emphasis on the early years? And he gave me the fin most Finnish answer. We have an ethical responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> like you were saying, but once again, we, it's the environment that comes in. If we're aware of our role in it. Yeah what would it look like without us in it um mm. we all know there's many services out there that don't provide it um don't have positive interaction with children like we've all yeah. seen those interactions between yeah. teachers and students and um, we all however if we can create an environment for the child to have their agency we don't know if they miss breakfast we don't know if they've been up all yeah. night with domestic violence but if we can create an environment where they can go have a seclude, like be secluded and have some independence, or they can run and move their bodies to burn off that, like that's yeah. what agency is about. You don't yeah. have the resource to go to every child and have this in deep, in deep, in depth connection and understand where they're at, and and especially they move so quick, not just <laughs> physically but emotionally, and emotionally. they evolve and they have so many breakthroughs. Um, so we can't keep up with them. But my thing is, is if we create a really good environment, the, they, can, they can make the environment their own. Yeah. yeah. And it's, that's where the power of it comes from. And I think we forget that. So it's why I, I did teaching because I had that type of background. Mm. And then I realised teaching can't really in, uh, affect many, whereas in out of school house care, I had 400 different children on our books. Wow. And we can provide that breakfast. Yeah. Um, when you've been through it too, you can pick up pretty quickly who's the kid yeah. in the same uniform all week. We had spare uniforms we could give them without anyone even noticing because the worst thing I hated when I was that child was having to ask for it. You shouldn't yeah. have to really as a kid. Yeah. It's great if the adults around you take notice and help make that change and let you be a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and we, like so many, like even getting your hair done, I was that kid that never got their hair done. I would have loved to have gone to before school care and had someone have like done your hair and all those little things. Mm -hmm. We, I think as educators, we take for granted of what we can provide to those kids that may not necessarily have it. And it doesn't even mean they have to come from a low socioeconomic background. No. It can be even no. just a, a different type we forget sometimes like just the neglect that the parents are both working, they both leave their house yeah. early. We don't know how that kid, like who's bringing that kid to school. It could actually be a nanny or it could be yeah. just the parents being on the phone the whole time or on the emails yeah. and there's just that disconnect. There's so many different things and we can help be that like, I guess that positive space no matter yeah. what else is going on because also once you go into the classroom, you're on full-blown learning. It's a bit yeah. different. They're being seen. Is yeah. what I'm hearing there. Yeah. You're like, oh, I matter. Yeah. You yeah, know? exactly. I, I always use that when I was in on the floor, especially as a director, I always tried to be on the floor, just trying to be that for the other mm. children that were what you wish you had. And then try to impose it on people. I didn't have to impose on Callum. He's a natural like that. <laughs> but getting that message across to other educators too and what we yeah. do. Um, and I know we've got that. Uh, we touched on it before, like the turnover and I guess there's an mm. educator shortage and yeah. stuff, but I think getting more of that message of why we do what we do across instead of 
always talking about the bad pay, yeah, <laughs> the yeah, short yeah. staff. We, we, we need to keep people in the Rosters. industry and get them in. Yeah. We need to convince them to come in. I think I was talking to Cal about it the other day. We need a bit of a positive spin on what we do and what's so positive or what we can get out of it. Um, and I am so sidetracked there. I'm sorry. You guys are all <laughs> doing it, though. Like, Callum's doing it because he's he's demonstrating these great practices yeah. that that are celebrated in such a way where it elevates what's going on and then the rubbish is no longer acceptable. Yeah. So you're pulling, you're, yeah. you're improving, you're pulling up, you're improving, you're pulling up as well. So you one, know, all, all get in there. And one of the things which I want to acknowledge here, Bobby, that although you say that, you know, you were risk averse and all that, but you were still open uh, as, mm. as, a, as a director, oh, you were yeah. still open for your educator to to keep challenging you, you yeah. know, to keep, keep uh, to to kind of take that portfolio of and make it portfolio of his own. And Caleb, like you know, educating parents and kind of sharing his passion with parents and the kids, and you know, even asking those questions that what did you do as a player, or hey, well, what why, why can't we do this or why can't we do that? And you know, like amount of schools that I had the privilege to go, uh, many times, uh, f- uh, yeah, we are talking about the agency of children. We don't have educators' sense of agency because they, even if they have an amazing idea, they might not have an, uh, mm. a coordinator or a director, as we call it in New South Wales, like you, Bobby. So they, they would like to, uh, it's, 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 it's Calum, absolutely, but it's also the combination of Calum and Bobby that allowed mm. that school to, from no tree climbing to tree climbing, and perhaps if you had stayed longer and Calum was there, I mean, you could have done a bit way more. Uh, than I would have that. loved so, five. Uh, uh, <laughs> that was a goal before I left and I never got it. <laughs> Bias, what, no, you name it. <laughs> um, what, I, I get the question a lot, but I'd like to propose it to you guys. Like, What was the breakthrough that you observed for them to say, okay, you can do it? Uh, we had a few changes I, in principles. So it was like you'd plead your case to one principle. Oh, no, no, here's another one. <laughs> go back and go again I don't Callum's got different because also Callum might not realize because we had so many great educators like Callum all for risky play they may come at me every day of the week but they may not realize like I'm I'm kind of hassling the principal in the background Mm. as well over time and softening them up um and uh, facts I think when you're dealing with it depends on your principal too on what their type of personality is I think for me we, we actually had a change of principle and um, I think one let us do it. So when the next one came on, I just said the last one, let us do it. And that kind of got left. I then got asked some questions along the way, um, especially teachers would complain about tree climbing, but then just proving like, we, well, look at teachers in the playground. It could be three, 500 kids and one teacher. Mm. I don't know what it's like in Queensland, but that's what it's like here. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah, with yeah. tree climbing, we put it on the program as an activity. So it wasn't kids just climbing without anyone there. And we also tried to make sure as an educator that was comfortable with it. We did have some, and I noticed, I don't know if Cara remembers, it was the one studying teaching that sometimes didn't feel comfortable being the supervisor for the tree climbing. Mm. And it's like, you're the most knowledgeable person here, but in their head, they just didn't want to do it. Um, And I think that helped get it across. Mine was just, delving into play and just finding out more about it like and researching like okay this is it and then hearing the words like if you want to do this if you want to go alone this isn't going to work and I I feel like for so long I've tried to go alone by myself and I'm like Mm -hmm. I actually want to see change in this you know change that I would like to see and (laughs) help others and teach and I need to you know be educating others as well and that's not just imposing my you know, my want and desire for this, as, as much as I innately think this is the best thing, um, it's, it was that critical reflection, you know, people would go out and the loose parts area, and then mm. I would question, I would talk to them after it, or, you know, if I said, if it's something that makes you feel unsafe and stop it, then mm. we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it after. And then as that conversation have it happening, and it's not me just saying you should do this because kids should be able to play. I want to hear why, you would stop that and you know what where you're coming from yeah. and then that made them feel so much more comfortable that they're being listened to and not just you know you have to do this because i said it and there's that conversation and it, and that's how it got across and they felt you know? seen as well we well, yeah, felt talking seen they before felt heard about, all those yeah, things oh, it's, it's all in really the right. framework it's like all those yeah. outcomes they're for yeah. adults this is so mm-hmm. what like when it comes to frameworks and people that are rigid in their ideology they like they want to pick it to pieces but when you look at look at it there's a lot of so much freedom within it 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, how many mm-hmm. sectors is a is there a regulation that you have to show evidence to, that a child must explore and experience a natural environment? It doesn't tell you like an yeah. hour a day. It just goes, do it. And I love yeah. that about it. So some yeah, people don't like, it like you don't get told how to do it. Yes. But I love it. Like I've got the NQS in front of me, and it is like it might be five words, mm. and it's like like families are informed about the program and their children's progress. Do that however you like. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. You don't to get told how to was, do it. That whole outcome focus for so long, we're like, all right, we're going to focus on outcome one yeah. for this week. And I'm like, <laughs> I, 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 I understand it, but at the same time, like you're going to see literally every outcome being achieved, yeah. you know, this yeah. week. You know, take it back to the principles and the practices. You know, start there. Principles and practices yeah. will equal the outcomes. Like you're missing yeah. the point. You're missing the bigger picture right here. It's, yeah. it's more like an adult centric when you say, I'm going to achieve outcome one. It, it literally says that you already have an agenda and yeah. then you want the children to then fit into it. And I was yeah. listening to your That's video. That's it, because uh, it's easy, you know, yeah, for, it's for easy. a director. It's, it's easy like, for it to like, we tick the box. Hold, hold that soccer ball because I need to do a critical reflection of you holding a soccer ball. Okay. And I need to take a photo too. <laughs> so, no, no, missed it. Go back, go back, do it again. <laughs> no, missed it, missed it. Yeah, missed it. Come on, Alex. Okay. <laughs> it's like oh i missed the uh, i missed you guys having fun can you have fun again so i can take a photo so i can do a critical reflection on that and take a, but um there are a couple of things which you all mentioned and i just wanted to as a listener i've been listening and 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 and, and thinking about how um reasonable things need to be so when i when mm. i listen to uh I was i was talking about ethical perspective ethical work ethics last week in townsville and and we look at looked at cooperative values, and one of the cooperative values, the first one was fallibilism, where you you need to accept that you could be wrong. But as there is there was one that when you when you have a differences in opinion, uh, let the let there be reasons, uh, mm-hmm. the, the, let there be reasons versus reasons rather than you versus the other person. Mm-hmm. And then when so actually when uh, Lucas was talking, he did talk about reasons, and then. And then uh, that we need to reason with people, you know? Mm-hmm. And then similarly, Caleb talked about, don't just tell me why not, tell me, uh, so don't just tell me why you don't want, uh, don't just tell me that don't allow my kids to blah, 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 but tell me the reasons why, why don't you want that? Yeah. And then Bobby was talking about facts that are you know, sharing facts with the, with, with the principals. And mm-hmm. it all seems like, I mean, um, I'm not belittling the existing reasons being, oh, I don't want risky play because my child would get hurt. Uh, other than that, what are the other reasons yeah. you've got? You know, other mm-hmm. than that, there's maybe nothing, but perhaps if Caleb was to like line up eight reasons and then four facts from Barbie and Lucas gives them like five different research material. And then I think not just as an educator, but also as a parent, when you give birth to kids, isn't that the ethical duty, eh? I mean, yeah. it's it's that, that's that ethics. And to be seen is so crucial um, for the child. And I think that the agency plays a big role in all of us um, yeah. with that. Mm-hmm. I think we do an episode on agency just quietly, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and also, and to be seen, I have like a couple of examples that happen in Townsville and I would love to share that with the, uh, with educators about how just by being seen, a child feels that he's playing sometimes just yeah. by, uh, or he's included in the play because yeah. this kid is like, I don't know, uh, they're not playing with me. And, and when I just observed for a little longer, what it was not happening was when he jumped that fence or uh, sorry, the bench, the three of the boys did not say, whoa, that's a nice jump. Whereas when they were jumping and there were like four benches, okay? So the other kids were jumping and they were like acknowledging each other. Oh, nice jump, nice jump. Hey, look at me. I can do it with one hand, two hands, blah, blah, blah. Whereas when this kid did it, Nobody saw, nobody said anything. So he's like, oh, they're not playing with me. And that's how he conceptualizes that. They are not playing with me. But what he's actually saying is, they're not looking at me when I do it. And they don't even say that I'm doing a good job. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll have a look at you. And, and I return. just observed for five seconds. Yeah. That's it. And then and the, oh, the three kids started saying, oh, this adult is giving attention to this kid by saying, oh, wow, that's a nice jump. And then he becomes a more popular kid because he's been watched by someone. And then... <laughs> And then these four kids are playing. So it's not that we have to sit down with the kids and say, oh, sharing is caring. Oh, you have to do this. You have to do that. No, because you're solving a wrong problem. Uh, just observe yeah. a little longer and have these lenses. As Lucas has been uh, mentioned, several research things Lucas has mentioned. And you're doing a, another research project again and spreading awareness among adults, uh, including parents, I mean, not just the educators. And we just have these lenses to watch what's happening among children. Mm-hmm. And perhaps uh, we solve the right problem. Maybe, maybe at times yeah. you're solving a wrong problem. <laughs> Yeah, and I just invite and want to encourage people just to think of your values as 
and and reflect for yourself and saying, are my values liberating me? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Like, are they liberating my practices? Are they liberating like what I'm doing every day? Or are they defining where I'm at every day and defining my practices? Mm. Mm. That's where you, we struggle to get that evolution because we're like, no, this is it. Like, I don't want everyone to go be the outdoor educator like I was. Right. Because we just end up with a bias in another realm. We do, we need that diversity. And I completely acknowledge, hey, some children don't. They, the worst thing in the world was to go sit in the mud patch with me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's available if they want it. Yeah, yeah. And I I, think- I, that, that, that's why I like the Barbie and Caleb combination. It was, it wasn't, uh, and it's, uh, we keep saying Caleb, but I know that Bobby doesn't uh, take that, uh, doesn't share much, but b- when I went to Bobby's service, I did not know who was leading it. Everybody was leading it. And it I was, always say in a nice way, they weren't in, running in around a, crazy, uh, they were having fun. It was, it was <laughs> an amazing, <laughs> amazing, <laughs> own, yeah. the sense of agency educators ad was, I started taking photos of, of their staff meeting because it was like so beautifully, beautifully done. So um, yeah, that's that's so crucial, and, and and we need leaders like that who are mm-hmm. ready to learn and open. And perhaps we need educators like Caleb. And, and I hope that this uh, listening to this podcast, even parents, um, uh, I I say that our podcast is helpful for everyone who has been a child once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. it, it's uh, applicable for everyone. And talking about podcast, uh, where uh, the also has a podcast on its own. Yeah, but, um, like yeah. Lucas. So how do people? Uh, what what's the what's the um, it's, called, we... it's called play it forward the worthy play podcast it. and play it forward is on all the all the platforms as well and just trying to get those experts in the field um if you're interested in risk um there's plenty on there from greg muse that is like the brain of play dude <laughs> okay. um, that callum referred to earlier Caleb, sorry um referred to earlier um yeah and it's it's this i just want to get that message out there and it might be those one little point per episode that someone might catch that might change their practices so it's all worthwhile uh, i'd have I to don't... plug it too i had that you know when you talk about you know well, how did you you know get to that place where you wanted to teach others like i vehemently studied your podcast i would listen to them multiple times and write notes down and then take that to my service it really informed me and it just the way you spoke and the people you had on all the time just brought, you know, so much information for me and it was all so relevant and meaningful. So I would, everyone should definitely listen to that. You have the best guests, you know, oh, Peter Gray, you. Maggie, Maggie, Dan, Greg, like the, the list goes on. It's yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. Dang it, got, Callum. <laughs> Callum. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> definitely. I oh, will do a Japan focused one. That would be amazing. Oh, I'd love that. Love that. Be wonderful. And um, coming up, we've got, um, had a really interesting conversation with the creator of Bluey. Yeah. And Clay, Joe Brum. Um, that's coming out in a few weeks as well. So Right. Oh, this is awesome. amazing. So for our listeners can, uh, can can really take advantage of the fact. And you know how you said that there's one thing from every episode. So uh, us uh, inviting guests, uh, I get a free PD, uh, Bobby and I were saying in the morning, like we were talking about how we get to learn so much mm-hmm. and then yeah. uh, spread that message. And I wrote in uh, on the top left side of my note taking, maybe that's the only space I had left, but anyways, yeah. it says, <laughs> it says values are liberating or defining me. You know, mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's something which uh, I'm going to take forward, uh, although it was very laugh at the moment, but it's, it's such, such a good thing that uh, kind of a metacognition. I'm not sure if you all are involved in it because there's so much of documentation sometimes is overwhelmed by work that after 6 p.m. you don't want to think about work many times. Mm. But if you do think about work in, in a non-contact hours or something, uh, perhaps you can, while listening to the podca- podcast like this um, or yours, and like really examine those values and say, what is driving yeah. this? Is fear driving it? Is it, is it just because I, I was grew up, I grew up in this environment. So perhaps this is the only thing I knew uh, or, or no, or perhaps I, do I need to more research or explore more and travel more maybe <laughs> like as Caleb was yeah. talking about how traveling. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something which I'm going to take forward um, with me. I will take much- forward from Lucas. If you want to understand life and possibility, understand play. 
I, mm. that just rings so true in my life. So, yeah. Thank you. And Bobby, what about you? You were going to um, say something and I interrupted you. So, yeah, no, I, I just, I know we started about play, but everything's so interlinked. Maybe even now, like we're two years into after, well, not after, since COVID started, like even if everyone kind of thinks about where their philosophy is at, it's likely it hasn't been updated since previously because we've all had so much on. I um, highly recommend checking out Worthy's website because you go into your philosophy vision and I even got your mission, purpose, like everything you've got on there. I know when I was first um, sending it all to Sarah, I'm like, it's everything we want in educators to see. But have a look, have a think of what you want for children now or in your philosophy going forward. Because yeah. what we've got now is a bit different to two years ago, depending yeah. where you live and what you've been through and what your children in your service have been through. And you might find there's a bit of change or even ourselves, a lot of people are changing what they want out of life. So that's going to mm. impact on your own philosophy as well. I'd love to see people kind of reflect on that. Yeah, I, I really feel it's a time for vision at the moment yeah. around that. We've, we've come out of the, like, feels like we're coming out the other side of the survival mm. yeah, and, uh, like, just get by. And now people have had a bit of um, the, pa the panoramic views opened up a bit more and they're going, well, what do I actually need? <laughs> like, not what do I want so much. Yeah, yeah. What do I actually need? And it plays into what we're seeing with the um, huge amounts of, resignations globally <laughs> and um but it's these times where you can really come up and re um reimagine your life your practices your values yeah wow that's a that's yeah. deep and and as you were talking about the website i just wanted to also plug in the tedx uq talk that you had uh it's yeah, an amazing talk you. which people can listen to it's also the link is actually on the website itself so when mm -hmm. we release this podcast we will release the website thing and the website also has in inclusive innovative designs <laughs> so mm. uh people and, and and when you watch the video you'll see some of the designs uh, uh there and um and i thought man if i have money no i mean <laughs> if i have that money uh, i'm gonna be like at my back here I'm like hey lucas you have some time couple of hours you like, grab a drink and uh, and then uh, and then say hey what should i do here man this is what yeah, i was thinking and sure. maybe uh uh, not in my apartment, one bedroom apartment, but maybe, you know. <laughs> hey, don't say never. Never, yeah. oh yeah, you never know. Hey. Play happens everywhere. Yeah. In, the, in the next Keep inspection, they're like, oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in the next inspection, they're like, oh, sorry, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, look at this website. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I really want to acknowledge um, um, Caleb's passion here. Uh, Caleb and I uh, had a chat here. Um, E on an email and and you know every time i talk to Caleb about play and it's just uh, so inspiring and uh, bobby thank you very much for again being here i know it was a tough call because last night you came to know about the podcast and yeah i was uh, left uh, off the emails i had no idea <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. bobby, bobby is the co-creator of this podcast and she was left out of the email so i <laughs> i take a little bit of responsibility of that uh, that's right <laughs> Uh, but uh, we had a chat in the morning and although things weren't so smooth um, and Bobby said to me at the beginning of this, you know, I haven't slept properly and, and my day is going to be busy. So I'm, I might not sound smart. I'm like, oh, come on, Bobby. That's makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> no words. I forget. For that for you. With the five week old, I just forget words, my friends oh. and, and names. Like I'm surprised <laughs> I remember Carol's name. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good on Zoom, eh? That the name stays at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. You can't. <laughs> so you don't forget. And uh, I actually want to acknowledge Luke, uh, Lucas's hard work. Lucas, um, your work with being a pilot and then seeing things and then uh, taking charge and you know being coachable. That is your mentor said something and you did something about it because mm. we always get advice from our mentors that we're not doing anything about it many times. <laughs> you know, but she said, okay, you know, I'm going to do something. And the way you explained your, uh, your 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 work life at least is you know how organically it kept bringing things to it and you took a step and then there was possibilities and then you took another step mm. and there was possibilities and not just, not that we don't have possibilities is maybe we're not looking at them at, mm. at times, you know? So, but let, 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 uh, today you have so much going for it. For it. So if people don't have to reinvent the wheel. They just have mm. to contact you. Uh, they have to contact, <laughs> they, 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 they can just follow, follow, follow your for, po podcast and perhaps yeah. that may reignite uh, the existing uh, 
rebellious nature maybe they might have or there's so much out there there's so much content like seven years Mm. ago looking at children nature network in america and there's a great resource if you want to get your geek on um they had like 17 peer-reviewed research papers on outdoor play now they've got over 2300 and if you just go into children nature network put it in the bar and you've got it available for you some of the best research in the world Hmm. so and people are accessible like you can jump online and go see them and like just get excited for yourself yeah 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 exactly and and, and recording this podcast is not easy Uh, it takes time it it took time for us to actually get get in front of each other you know it's hard to coordinate with busy lives so um i I want to thank you lucas one more time for for being available for sharing your knowledge and uh and we would love to have you again, uh, yeah, if absolutely. possible. You know, one hour love is to. never enough. We, we don't yeah. think it's enough. And and neither are listeners. They also want uh, uh, people. And coming from an educator, that this is this is what Bobby was saying at the beginning. You know, uh, people love to hear from educators. And it's not that you were immune to challenges. You had mm. challenges too. And, and, and the way you looked at it and the way you led it, it just gives us, inspires me. And I'm sure it inspires many who yeah. are listening. This is also on YouTube, so see, you can see how we look when we talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's good. Uh, we do smile every now and then. So yeah. Um, uh, thank you very much for for listening to the podcast, people. Uh, yeah. From um, well, uh, Lucas from Worthy, thank you. But thank also you, thank you guys so much as well. It's so nice to check in. Like you, you know, it can be lonely for a lot of people out yeah. there on on their drive to make a difference. Mm. So for you yeah. guys to make it available and share your passion, like coming in from Tokyo and and adding this different perspective, you're broadening yeah. that market of people that this message can sink into. Thank and, you. you know, by association, this is how you're reaching more people. Yeah. Now, how yeah. many people are listening that just need that little spark yeah. sometimes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm in Brisbane. I know uh, Bob, uh, Caleb is in Tokyo and Bobby, I don't know, Sydney something? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'm in Brisbane, so we should catch up, Lucas. Uh, yeah, you're in Gold Coast to. not far, and yep. uh, I'm I'm gonna gonna I have a couple of sessions in Gold Coast very soon, so I'll I'll stay in touch with you yep. and perhaps uh, send you an email or something. And, yeah, uh, but yeah, um, thank you. Uh, I'm lucky thank that you. I will be hanging out with Lucas. But if you want to hang out with Lucas, please listen to the uh, podcast. <laughs> Just inviting everyone. <laughs> play. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll do a play, play event for adults. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, bring the shipping uh, container. Long overdue, man. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> the podcast is Play It Forward. The website yeah. is worthy. W e a r t h y worthy. Co. C. Uh, C. O. Um, hang out with Lucas on the podcast, and thank you very much again thank for you listening. So much. Thanks, Sarah. And Thanks, have Sarah. a wonderful day to the listeners. Um, <laughs> Osh of the Well podcast. Goodbye from us. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. So thanks so uh, much, guys. Um, I'm away you. in the states for like a month from All tomorrow. Right. Oh, um, okay. oh no! Oh, we got you there at a good time. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed oh, your time with us, Lucas. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, so nice to put a face to the name and um, chat to the people I stalked online. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> as well. so, it's um, awesome, and no, I'll definitely um, be in contact about having you on the podcast as well on Play It Forward yeah. to yes. understand. Um, looking at like behavior is like the biggest yeah. thing. Uh, uh, like. and like listening to you both like I said because I'm an outsider you mm. both just had the same thing going into it same approach mm. but two different sides to it and you put yep. that together the environment and then the emotion you've just got like oh I'm doing a hole there accidentally yep. but that's just what you've got as well I, 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 I absolutely love it Lucas I mean there's I've now visited more than Barbie's was the first no second service in Sydney and I'm just mm. looking at the number of centers are seen i was making an invoice to a center just yesterday more than 257 services in the mm. last two and a half years and it's just yeah. that and the stories i got from townsville i just make it makes me cry like every oh, now and man. then i feel like oh the observation i want that to go forever to and i, I really yeah. want to have a podcast with you Bobby, and like really say in long version of what i noticed in a child two kids one after the other and the educators yeah. are like we never saw that and i'm like yeah because yeah. We, we don't talk about those things you know yeah. um so yeah, w- w- when you're back from uh, states, uh, and I'm also going going in states uh, in the month of October, but 
Uh, let's awesome. catch up, Lucas. Uh, yeah, if fine. you come to Brisbane or if I'm in the Gold Coast, uh, I would like to say hello. We are looking to move up your way too in probably yes. June. We're just awesome. trying to get a rental. There's nowhere to rent up well, there. Well, <laughs> keep yeah. an air out for you. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's yes. Like, oh, man. As yeah. well. We just want to get away from Sydney. Where are you um, going to work? Hey, we work from home. We just run, yeah. we run Firefly. So Perfect. we do recruitment um, events, training. I don't know. I'm on maternity leave. So my brain's yeah. just turned off. <laughs> They're really good. They're really good. <laughs> but we can work from anywhere. So. Sure. Caleb was saying something. Sorry, yeah. Caleb. I was going to say, Lucas, if you have any contacts or know anyone in Japan around, you know, mm -hmm. who has like a play work um, kind of mind, I'd love to. Yeah, yep. I you, will. Um, I will get you in contact with the lady that did the research there, because she's got some crazy photos of like wild, like loose parts play, and they've got these. Yeah. Yeah. There's an awesome yeah. place in Setagaya in Tokyo where they have an adventure playground where they um, have fires, and I've I've been yeah. to the park um, when I was down there. So yeah, yeah trying to see if it's. I'll ask Greg as well because he's still that. involved with the International yeah. Play Association board. Yeah, no, I know Hitoshi um, Shimomura here is involved in the IPA. Um, and yeah. Izzy, I got involved with Izzy and I got his contact. It's a bit hard, awesome. the language barrier. I need to really learn some Japanese so I can yeah. keep making inroads here, over here. So, You'll yeah. get there. So awesome. That's uh, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, thank Caleb. You. Thanks for the um, awesome thank, thank you. Thank you. Have an awesome time, everyone. And, um, yeah, enjoy your trip, um, Lucas. Thank you. And see you soon, Barbie, in June if you get here. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Okay. You will. Some, you, no you rain. Will. You, <laughs> you will. will. You will. Okay. Much love, guys. Everyone. Keep Bye. up the amazing work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank see you. Thanks, Bye, guys. Everyone. See ya.